Hello. Hi, this is Michelle Cooper. I promised to do some loose watercolor figures with just six brush strokes today. So, hi Kelly. Nice to see you here. Hi Joy. Love to see you guys here. I'm letting everybody kind of get online here before I start too much of anything. Last time I did a scope, I demonstrated how to do a figure like this with the umbrella. It was only my second one, so this is my third uh, periscope, so sorry if I make any mistakes, but I'm kind of new at this online live stuff. Not new at painting, though. I've been painting for a long time. Hello. How do you say your name, Calligraphy Cult? If I don't see your name on there, a real name, I'd like to know it. So, hi, Melinda. Hello, everybody. So how many of you guys do watercolor? Are there lots that do watercolor? <laughs> oh, you're Michelle, too. But you're Michelle with two L's instead of one L, like me. So good, we can tell each other apart then. <laughs> so do any of you guys do watercolor? You just want to learn, huh? And for fun, yes. Good. Hi, Tanya. Just a beginner. Well, you know what they say, every expert was once a beginner. So doing it for fun is just the way to learn, I think. Really quite fun. Okay, so the six-stroke figure is not like the one you see on the screen here. <laughs> That's a few more than six strokes. But I can show you what six-stroke figures look like. They look like this. So as a beginner, I think it's kind of encouraging to know that you could, you could learn how to do um, some six-stroke figures. And all you need is a brush and a little bit of paint. So... The kind of brush that I think is really um, good for, no matter what your what your experience is, is a number eight round brush or something close to it. So it looks kind of like this. If you can get a sable brush, even better. First, got, you got your first big set. <laughs> Yay! That means you got plenty of tomorrows with, with your set. You know, watercolors last a long time. So I'm just you're going to get a little bit of. Um, mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna that I already have in my palette here. I'm going to show you the six figures with this brush. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's a number eight round, but don't be fooled by, by numbers because it doesn't matter if it's a six, an eight, or a ten. So here we go. With one, here's one stroke. That's uh, See how my brush is sideways like this? Go down the, the uh, paper by pushing. Oh, your grandmother's brush, how wonderful. I think that's special. Then you go back into, into it again, into this area, and you press and lift as you, as you draw the stroke downward. Okay, so that's one, two, three, one more, right in here while it's still wet. Four, five, and six. Yay! We got this guy, his back is to you. I'm gonna fill him in just a little bit more. And he's got the stance of somebody that's probably walking and texting at the same time. <laughs> I've seen that, have you? The whole posture of people has changed. Thanks. And then if you want to uh, add just a few more strokes of water, you can draw the shadows out so they don't look like they're, you know, floating around the landscape. So you do a one, you just stroke like that, you've got somebody facing away from you, right? So if you want to do somebody facing toward you, you can kind of just give them a v-neck first before you do that torso. Okay, press and hold, just press it down. And then you can, uh, let's see, we'll put a skirt on her maybe. So we just go upwards and squish, squish your brush around. I want you to be loose and easy. He's jogging away and yet he sees her here and he's slowing down. Push, lift, push, lift. Okay, she's got these furry boots on, I guess. And then, here's this. Here's her head, 
don't make the head too big, okay? The helmet law does not apply downtown or on Periscope. Okay, here we go. So there she is. Um, she's just been to other stores, so you put another thing on here. Now you see she's got a bag carrying it. See, so what you... <laughs> oh, you have no idea. My students know, like wacky jokes. <laughs> anyway, so see how it kind of all blends in together there? So that's the important part. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alyssa. And thank you too, Kelly. So isn't that fun? So you see somebody you're driving by. I saw this guy today um, just on the corner of the street. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to just get another batch of paint on here. And he was sitting on the street, and I, it's one of the neatest characters I've ever seen for a while. He's sort of bending backwards, and he had a, he had a hat, a really cool hat on. And then, and it was like that, and then he had a, sort of a messenger bag, and it looked like, I think he must have been maybe, I don't know, um, 70 years old or so, and a pair of tennis shoes. So, that was pretty cool. He was just waiting at the light when I was turning. So, I just thought, wow, I'm going to see if I can remember that. What fun! So you just do, just do the, the silhouette, and since we're people, we understand, we know what they look like. So if you want to do a crowd of people, then you don't do one person at a time. Doing a crowd of people can be in color, or it can be in black and white, or just one color. Yeah, my paper's at an angle, probably just off of a 90 degree angle. And then, um, so, uh, you know, you can, you can do people in color. Then it's just a lot of different brush strokes of, of color. Thank you, Michelle. So let's get some more paint here now. Um, I'll get some ultramarine blue really quick, and we'll do several figures, all right? So don't do all of them at the same, t uh, you know, one at a time. Do do one here for a torso, then, <laughs> then do another one, then do random, just random large shapes. Always do the large shape first. Then you go press and pull for the leg, press and pull, press, press, and don't worry about counting the legs too much. I had a friend, my, sto my students know about this, I had a friend who won an award in an art show with this group of horses running, and then she told me at the opening night, she says, guess what, I'm one leg short. <laughs> so, here we have, wow, that guy's huge. Well, he's got a hoodie on too. That's fun. Then here's another guy. So I'm not trying to make these in, on purpose. I'm just, I mean, you know, uh, anything in particular on purpose. I'm just making brush strokes to represent heads and hair. And now, while that's still wet, I want, I want to um, go with this. I'm just using plain water right now, doing some diagonal strokes to show some action. Maybe these people are all crossing the street. So I'll just, or like, like these, yeah, these people are more like business people because they're just gray or they're blue. But these people up here, they're having a fiesta. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's kind of a, a fun way that you can do figures without fear. You know, you can just use your six, you know, number eight round and your six strokes and try that. Yes, I have been recently in Hawaii. So I'm glad that you read that. Look, they're not wearing everything they own in the closet like we do. Anyway, I think maybe this might help you. If you have people on the beach far away, if you have people standing at a bus stop, you no know, more do you have to have these cityscapes and beaches devoid of people, but you can try the six-stroke figure and have a lot of fun. Have a lot of fun with it. Thank you. Yeah, see, then you can go into more explicit things. Um, I have, uh, I do sketches that are similar to the six-stroke figures, but just a little more developed. So let me see if I can find one in my sketchbook here for you. Yeah, we were with family in Durango, and there were people on a zip line. You're welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Wow, I like flowers, too. Anyway, so these people were way up there on the tower in a zip line. Steps to the colored one? Sure. You don't think this is taking too long? <laughs> okay, I will try real quickly to do, do the, the colored one for you. 
So I'll put this on another paper on here. And so the, the way you do the colored one is then you start putting random, again, random spots of color here and there. And then, oh, I'd love to have you in my class too, Michelle. Do you live in the Pacific Northwest? <laughs> It'll be a long commute if you're not. Okay, here, I'm going to give you the colored version in just a minute. First, I'm going to put a random bunch of colors on here. Let's see, I didn't think about doing what exactly I was going to do here. So let's get some orange and some green. I think that it doesn't take much. I think that your viewer, if you're a painter, your viewer can figure things out, you know. Just, just a silhouette is all you need. But the silhouette has to be at least something close. Yes, blobs to people. Color blobs. Okay, let's do that. And then I'll come back. Most everybody here is wearing jeans. So let's put some jeans on them. So let's see, where's that? There it is. Okay. So let's let's get some jean shapes on here. Ooh, that's cool. I like the color blends that are happening too. Let's do this, the sky. This person be wearing a skirt. This person jeans again. This little one jeans here. Now let's get some legs. Ooh, red strapless shirt. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Okay, let me get some tan legs here. Her dress is really blowing away. Oops, there. Let's get some tan legs. There you go. There you are. And then she's quite sassy, isn't she? Okay, let's get another. Let's get a head. So we'll put a little head on her here. And she's got this cool hairstyle. All right, and then we'll put, um, for her, she's on the outside. Oh, guys, thank you for the hearts. Okay, you know, go like this. And she's just walking downtown. I tell you. Okay, so let's get uh, some mixed up color. I just mixed some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Well, Make these a lot of these people have dark hair I notice in the world so I'll put these guys like this they're so close look at them oh okay then we'll put this over here like that again I'm gonna come back in with some 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 uh, oops no, I've got extra paint on there okay now we'll just put some sideways strokes here left and right left and right don't worry about it don't fix it as soon as you start fixing it you're in trouble okay so let's get some legs here, tall legs. Yes, okay, and then we'll make some shadows at the bottom. Let's go like this, like this, like this. And there they all are. We'll put a sign on the street. There's a sign, and there's a, what's this? Just a little post. Ooh, that's hard to do without holding on anything, and then Move it over like this. How about if we just have them downtown? So we'll put just a, a blur back here for the city. There we go. That could be your town. You could put whatever you wanted to put in there. I would put the Space Needle if I thought of it. Well, I can do it. Here's the Space Needle. There it is. Ta-da. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea of the shirt, Amanda. As soon as you start fixing it, you're in trouble. I know, isn't it amazing how you can just how you can just kind of make these up in your own head? That's the thing that I like about um, about painting loosely like this, because then your the viewer gets to participate. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. A kimono even, pretty nice. So anyway, that's what I wanted to do something very fast and very quick, so that uh, I could show you my. Yes, I'm in Seattle. So that I could show you my six-stroke figure. So I have information on the internet about that. Wow, that's awesome with those hearts. I'm just going to move them over for just a minute because I do have a tutorial online. You're very welcome. And it's on uh, michellecooper.com. And if you go to Instagram, you'll see me at the Michelle Cooper Art Art. So Michelle Cooper Art on Instagram. You're welcome. And I have to thank Emily Jeffords for a new hashtag that she has put up called um, Do It For The Process. 
And I think that's what you do have to do. You have to do it for the process and don't try to be perfect and just have fun with your medium. So all you beginners, you know, so there's one way to get better. Begin. <laughs> yeah, doesn't she, Emily? Yes, she's wonderful. And you know how I started with uh, Periscope was I was following On Marwin on uh, Instagram and uh, all the people that are involved with those two guys and with the hashtag do it for the process all those people are just wonderful i've learned so much about doing um, just the periscopes from you guys so yes anyone can sign up for my classes i have a beginning and a, a workshop coming up that's for people who've never tried anything so uh, that's in the kirkland art center and if you go to my um my blog on the profile of Periscope here. <laughs> yes, do it for the chocolate. See, you, you, I know I don't even know what I was talking about, but never mind. I like chocolate too. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to say goodbye to you guys. Thank you very, very much for coming on and letting me do my third Periscope ever and for all the lovely hearts. Thanks a lot. Bye.